Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about the performance improvements that are made available to you with SSD caching on a Synology NAS. As you can see we're continuing, this is part two in this series, where we are utilizing the brand new Synology SNV series of SSDs, the NVMEs. We've created an area of cache as you can see here on screen, that's volume two, and we are utilizing eight Ultrastar SSDs in two RAID 5 environments, each one um, on the system. We've got one RAID 5 that has no cache on the left hand side of the screen, and another RAID 5 using Ultrastars that doesn't, uh, that does have SSD cache on board. If you saw part one, you'll know that I am voiceovering some older recordings, so things will be slightly out of sync. But as you can see, we are using 12.8 gigabytes of data and it's 42,000 files across just shy of 2,000 folders. Now, the exact same data is on both of these devices. As you can see, we scroll down to the bottom and we can create a copy of that data. Then we're gonna make, um, we're gonna paste that onto the desktop of this machine so we can see how long it takes for it to do this transfer. We're also gonna look at how it transferred, the difficulty of the files, and ultimately find out if doing the same thing over 10 GBE is going to be any better or worse with SSD caching enabled. So we've got it ready, let's go. We're preparing the files and we can see them both on screen now. Right, so as you can see on screen, I've put to the left hand side there, this is the RAID 5 without cache and on the right hand side of the screen, we've got the RAID 5 with cache. These were both filmed about barely an hour apart and we want to see how long it takes both of them to allow us to download these files. Now, you may have noticed, that even though we're using 10 GBE, that although there is an initial very fast start to both of these downloads, things do start to slow down across both systems. Now, a lot of this is to do with the complexity of the files that we're using in both. Regardless of whether you're using SSD cache or not, using 10 GBE is not simply a case of opening um, a portal that's 10 you know, uh, 10 gigabits in density. The, you know, complexity of the files, number of small files, number of big files, and the, you know, the type of files will make all the difference. So straight away, we can see there that the non-cache one on the left actually peaked very, very quickly. It was a higher speed, very early doors, but straight away, you know, within about, in relative terms, 20 to 30 seconds, the cached version started to see higher overall read and writes early doors now that does even out throughout the course of this video and i have sped things up for the sake of this transmission but the non-cache on the left hand side of the screen there it peaked early slowed down and then eventually maintained its rhythm at around about the 50s and 60 megabytes per second on average and in the end the non-cache download of 12.7 gigabytes of data took 8 minutes and 25 seconds total. The non, sorry, uh, the SSD cache side of things, that, again, because of that higher spike right at the beginning of three to 400 megabytes per second for an early period at the start of this video, um, it took 7 minutes and 33 seconds, so barely a minute between them. But it's worth highlighting that that still you know, around about 8 to 10% overall between them. And the caching was of tremendous benefit on those early files. Now, a lot of the test files we had there, a lot of them were email cabinets, a lot of them were, you know, standard images and vectors that were quite similar, and some of them were identical dupes and clones with a couple of ISOs and quite a few back-end VM files as well across three Windows VMs. The result was that those core files that we've downloaded at the same time that we're backing up certain files and files from different machines when we're doing our CMS video, the result was that the cache was smart enough during the build up to this video that it learned a lot of those files and moved them over to the area of cache. And although, you know, shy of a minute, it doesn't seem like a huge difference between these two, but what I will say is that we did see the benefit when downloading these files over 10 GBE to my Windows platform the SSD cache was of benefit.
Right, so the next thing we're going to do is upload those files that we downloaded to a brand new directory from my desktop PC onto the NAS. So again, we're going to repeat this both with the non-cache and cache rates. I'm going to click copy on that desktop file we're creating. Again, that's the 12.7 gig. We're then going to move that file onto the NAS and we're going to see how long it takes the RAID 5 on the non-cache volume and the cached volume on screen now. We're going to transfer it up and run them simultaneously side by side to see either which one is going to be the quicker and more importantly how they handle each of the files. So let's upload now. Run that uploading, it's going to discover the files. And as we move forward into it, the first thing that becomes very, very apparent is the idea that both of them have got that early spike. Though that said, even though there's the early spike, both of them are seemingly maxing out at around that 400, late 300s figure. And a lot of that is to do with the internal SSD of my host system. You can see there on the graph being displayed by the read write actions of both of them. But it is worth again highlighting that the SSD caching does seemingly give it that extra kind of consistent line throughout. Whereas we're seeing a little bit more bumps along the way uh, with the spin up, spin down of the non cache equivalent. Now, caching is uh, generally a lot more beneficial to reading than it is to writing. And of course, we're performing a write action right now. But I will say that the speed difference between them at the end of this was incredibly small. It was only 6 minutes 43 for the non-cache one on the left to run that 12.7 gig upload and the cache supported volume took 6 minutes 12. So the difference was so small, I'm not sure that we can quantify that as a big, big difference overall. And I think the cache probably was the tiniest amount of help, but because everything we're doing right now is right, if anything, the cache may have been unhelpful due to the extra working out it would have done in the background. But overall, when it comes to upload and download over 10 GBE, I do think the benefits of SSD caching are negligible. Not only with the Synology NVMe series, the SNV3400 we're using, and the E10M20 card, but how you utilize your data is gonna make all the difference. And if you're creating brand new data rather than accessing pre-existing data uh, more commonly, then SSD caching probably won't give you that much of a benefit. And I kind of suspected this would be the case for this test, but I did want to include a uh, Windows-based 10G upload and downloading because a lot of you seem to think having caching means that data will be written directly to the SSD, which, if it's the same core files or multiple backups and you've got things like compression and deduplication, that is possible, but not in the environment that we're running for today's video. But I'm going to wrap things up here. Part three of this series of videos will be looking at Atto Disk Benchmark, a combination of typical read-write type, read -write types across file types and IOPS compared with hard drives and hard drives that have got SSD caching enabled. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Um, do enjoy the rest of these videos. I know they are super dull and appeal to like 1% of people, but I hope you're one of that 1% that enjoyed it. Click like if you if you did enjoy it. Click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you on part three of this series.